Hey everyone, welcome back to Moth. Thank you for watching my video last week. Uh, I got a new subscriber, so thank you for that. This week, we'll talk about the importance of tracking metrics and why it is important as a diabetic or a pre-diabetic to keep track of some of the key metrics that a diabetic should be keeping track of. But before we get started, as usual, let's start with channel disclaimers. I can only speak about my experience as a type 2 diabetes for over 20 years. I am more or less ignorant when it comes to type 1 diabetes. So if you have type 1 diabetes, I would suggest you work with your doctor to understand what works best for you. As I said before, I'm not a doctor or a medical practitioner. So please do consult your doctor if you want to adopt a similar lifestyle or follow some of my suggestions. I'm documenting my personal experience here. And while it should work for most of the people, and when I say most of the people, people who are diabetic, please do always consult a doctor before making any sort of changes in your lifestyle. While a low-carb diet seems to be effective for me, everyone is different. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. As I said before, never stop or change your medication without consulting a doctor first. Your primary goal should be getting your parameters under control and if you need to depend on medicine for that, please do do so. Finally, this channel is really not focused on weight loss, but really on long-term weight management. And that is important as a diabetic is what I feel. Now, having said all that, let's start with this week's metric review. and. Please ignore the date because I didn't fix the slide from yesterday. So as you can see, I've been tracking my weight, uh, blood pressure, fasting sugars and sugars throughout the day and the amount of exercise that I've been getting. Anything that is highlighted using the saffron color is an indicator that my blood sugars or my blood pressure was higher than normal. And it might be much higher or much lower, but I have not differentiated that at this point of time as you can see over these seven days my weight had hardly changed please ignore the last one because i believe that's an outlier uh, my blood pressure has been fairly constant uh, sugars i think more than half of the time was normal uh, and of course i'm on medication but even despite that fact in some cases especially post lunch as you can see on four of the six days that I have tracked my blood sugars post lunch, uh, it was higher than normal. And it's not just a bit high, it was much higher than normal. I attribute this high blood sugars post lunch to this meal I've been having almost every day for the past one week. And this is a meal that is high in carb, uh, relatively high in fat, and has about 40 grams of protein but yeah it was high in carbs and i believe personally i believe that is the reason why my blood sugars were high post lunch now let's take a look at the macros for this week and as you can see on most of the days i've been eating more than 2500 calories and as you can see from the previous slide my weight had hardly changed Personally, I'm not convinced by this calorie in equals calorie out or calorie in determines how much your weight will be and all those things because I've been eating more than my recommended daily allowance and my weight has hardly changed over the past two weeks. As you can see, I've been getting most of my calories from fats and carbs and that is something that I'm trying to address in this week uh, going forward at least because yesterday was not that great a day personally, when it comes to the balance of carbs, fats, and protein. Any case, uh, I'll be using the next few days to understand my response to carb intake when it comes to blood sugar, my weight, uh, my blood pressure, all those factors. As you can see from the macro split for the last week, I got more than 50% of my calories from fats uh, the next highest source of uh, calories were carbs and of course in the last came proteins 
And this is something that I'm trying to address because I think uh, getting, uh, getting a sufficient amount of protein every day is pretty important for anyone, uh, regardless of the fact that if that person is a diabetic or not. So we'll talk about this a few minutes down the line. But yeah, as you can see, uh, I've been uh, eating a fat-rich diet and that has really not affected my weight. But I'm still not sure if that is the reason why my blood sugars were high or the fact that I've been eating uh, carbs almost every day for lunch. So I need to keep a track of that in this week, as I mentioned before. Okay. Now let's talk about the main topic for this video. What is the importance of tracking metrics? Now, let me talk about why it is important as a diabetic to track the metrics. Because as I mentioned, everyone is different. You need to understand the sugar response to the meals that you're eating. And one of the important metrics that I've been tracking regularly for the past two weeks has been the amount of calories I've been taking and trying to understand like what is the split of that nutrition. And this is something that I would recommend for any diabetic or pre-diabetic to do on a daily basis. And although I've been accumulating all the macronutrients into a single number, at least going forward this week, I'll be breaking down the nutrition by the meal just to understand the response to individual meals post uh, lunch, say post dinner, right? So I think it is important for you to track your blood sugars on a regular basis, your blood pressure on a regular basis. Weight is a different thing because uh, as you can see from my metrics, it has been fairly stable. So you really cannot judge on a daily basis how much your weight is changing unless and until you are on some sort of extreme fast, which is something that I wouldn't recommend as a diabetic just starting off. So it is hard to see the difference or change in weight over a period of few days. And despite that fact, I would strongly recommend that you track your weight at least on a weekly basis to understand what is the trend. Now, if you have an option to track it on a daily basis, go ahead and do it. There's no harm in doing that unless and until you get paranoid or something like that. What are some of the discoveries from this week uh, based on tracking metrics over the past few days? I'm personally very sensitive to carbohydrates and I strongly believe it is carbohydrates that are affecting my blood sugars rather than fats or proteins. And I'm hoping to prove that in this week over the next uh, few days. One thing that I found out is that calories, carbs, and fats add up really fast, especially when you're eating out, where you really don't know how much you're eating unless and until they publish the calories for a portion of the meal or things like that. So this meal that I've eaten, say, five out of seven days last week, is especially high in fat with 72 grams of fat, uh, uh, especially high in carbs with 80 to 100 grams of carb, depending on the amount of rice that you're eating. And uh, all this adds up to 1,100 calories to 1,200 calories, uh, depending on the amount of rice that you've chosen and depending on the amount of topping you decide to add on top of that. So this balance is something that I'm trying to find because I still think that 2,500 calories is okay for me, but a little bit on the higher side. I really want to balance the amount of protein also because as can be seen from my metric split, I'm barely cracking that 15% mark from on a daily basis. And this might be because of the fact that, you know, I'm eating more than 2,500 calories and majority of the calories are coming from fat and carbs. But uh, I still want to ensure that I'm getting an, a decent amount of protein. And this is something that I want to highlight at this point of time. What exactly is a decent amount of protein when it comes to an individual? 
there is a lot of discussion online and from a lot of medical journals when it comes to what would be an appropriate amount of protein for a normal person doing a normal 9 to 5 job, a fairly despawn job in my opinion. But in that case, the research seems to sort of agree that 0.8 to 1 gram of protein is what is ideal for a person who's not hitting the gym regularly or who's just doing normal cardiovascular exercises. So I would try to get at least 68 grams of uh, proteins on a daily basis, which I've been getting every day, but the problem has been finding that right balance, right? So uh, I would probably have to supplement some of my normal food intake with uh, some sort of protein supplements or protein powders or protein shakes. So yeah, I mean, that's what I've learned from tracking my metrics this week. So I hope this has been useful for you. And before I go, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One is a question that I got from the last week's episode, which is basically from my father. He wanted to know how much protein is recommended for a senior person. And he's in his mid seventies at this point of time. And it's a valid question. And there are research again, out there which says that getting a slightly higher than normal amount of protein is recommended for senior citizens or senior people. So I would at least recommend that people of uh, my father's age group or people above 60 or 65 get at least one gram of protein per kilogram. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not a doctor or a medical practitioner. So it is my recommendation that you work closely with your doctor and your uh, dietitian to understand what works the best for you and track your metrics to understand how your blood sugars are changing and how your blood sugars are affecting when you switch to a higher protein diet and finally i want to talk about what i'm planning to do for the next week so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to track my nutrition by every meal that i'm taking the second thing that i'm going to do is to ensure that I am measuring my blood sugar after every meal, uh, regardless of the fact if I eat a high high carb meal or a low carb meal. The third thing is I am going to stick to a, a relatively low carb meal where possible, especially when I'm eating at home or if I'm going out and eating. I'll try and avoid rice and breads and things like that. I'll see how successful I am when it comes to eating out and uh, reducing the amount of carbs that I'm taking. And finally, I'll uh, let you know the sugar response when it comes to a high carb or a low carb meal and update you in the next week. Yeah, so thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please like. Uh, I really hope to help people out there. I hope you can find some value from this video and I'd like to thank you for watching this video and thank you for coming back again. See you next week. Bye.